This is my vow. All gods must die. Why do you want to kill me? Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the Marvel Legends Gore the God Butcher from the upcoming Thor Love and Thunder. Starting with the packaging, we get a nice big window box. The downside to a box like this is that if the figure is packed kinda light, it's very easy to tell. Colorful logo for Thor Love and Thunder down here along with Gore's name. Spot varnish, broken Mjolnir at the top. Adding all those cracks was a nice touch. Bit of gore on the side. And a whole lot of gore on the back. And yes, get ready for lots of gore puns. Wielding a strange and terrifying weapon, Gore will let nothing stand in his way. Well, that explains a lot. In their defense, they probably want to steer clear of the whole god-killing thing in a toy marketed for four-year-olds. Build a figure for the way of his Korg, and here are all the figures you need to build him. We've already looked at Mighty Thor. Also, for those who want it, here's the UPC. Obviously, they can't say a lot in the bio because they want to protect spoilers, and that's fine. A little gore goes a long way. For packaging, I'm giving Gore the God Butcher one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Gore stands at six and a quarter inches. First things first, and let's just get this out of the way, this looks nothing like Gore the God Butcher in the comics. Just as I plan on judging him by his own merit when I sit in the movie theater, I'm going to critique this figure based on what it is and not what it isn't. As we can see, he has some stitched up looking scars running up the back of his head. Not gonna lie, he kind of looks like a baseball. There are some veins printed on the sides of his head and neck to give his skin a sort of translucent look, and we can see more of that scarring running down his arms. The more I look at him, the more I wonder, was he sliced open and then stitched back together? If they showed it in the movie, that would definitely be pretty gory. Ha, <laughs> got him. We do see a scene in the trailer where he has tattoos instead. Perhaps he'll start out as some kind of a priest in the movie and then mutilate himself to renounce his faith. One thing I'm very fascinated by are his fingertips. Considering that they're blackened like the Scarlet Witch and Agatha Harkness, I wonder if we're going to find out he used the Darkhold. Shifting over to the body and he's just wearing some simple robes. The cloak piece is removable. Flipping it around and we can see some more layers on the back. Kind of a shame we didn't get a hooded option. One thing I will say is that the texture is really, really good. And we see that texture all over. And if you look, you can see some stains around the hem of his garment. On that subject, they did a really good job of fraying the edges. Same with the bottom of his cloak. I also appreciate that they included the stains back here when it would have been a lot cheaper not to. Peeking underneath and there's nothing too remarkable down here. That's not what she said. Since it's hidden by the skirt there aren't any wrinkles or folds. They did continue the texture though. We do get a bit of detail around the cuffs of his ankles. And while this version of Gore isn't walking around with monster feet, he is at least walking around with bare feet. Peeking underneath and he does have peg holes but they're so shallow that it's pretty much pointless. I also can't help but wonder if this little divot is so that they can save 0. .00001 cent per figure. Flipping him around and here's how he looks from the back with the cloak and here he is without. Strictly from an action figure perspective I am very impressed with the engineering and painted detail of this figure. For a presentation I'm giving Gore the God Butcher one whole point. Moving on to Bo's ability and if you don't mind for this part I'm gonna ditch the cape. From the top and Gore's heads on a dumbbell joint he can look up this much, this far down, really great tilt, and all the way around. Swivel hinge shoulders raise up this far, bicep swivel, pinless double jointed elbows, and swivel hinge wrists. The left hand hinges up and down, the right hand being his sword hand hinges side to side. Shifting the torso and Gore has a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far, hunch forward this far, he can also tilt and twist. Below the waist and... <laughs> To be fair, he does have a slit in the sides. This allows him to split this far, and he can kinda kick. He also has thigh cut, pinless, double jointed knees, a swivel at the cuff of his jogging pants, and Marvel Legends ankles that hinge and pivot. As long as you're okay with poses like this, you're fine. Otherwise, the lack of range that this figure has because of the robe is downright ungodly. For posability, I'm giving Gore half a point. Moving on to playability, and Gore comes with his sword. For those of you who don't know, in the comics, it's called the All Black. Uh, the Mostly Black? 
He can hold the sword like so. Shame he doesn't come with any alternate hands. Perhaps instead of having the dark hold, the sword will corrupt him similar to it. An alternate head would have also been appreciated. That said, he does come with the right leg of Korg. Some pretty nice paint detailing in the pants, also on the knee pads, and a bit of shading on the fur. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. For some Thor comparisons, here we have the very first 6-inch Thor ever made. This one was from Toy Biz. Here we have one of the very first Hasbro Marvel Legends. I just picked this up from a local toy store for some reason. Of course, we've got the 80 Years version, probably the best comic book Thor figure ever made. Here we have Beta Ray Bill, or as I like to call him, Thorse. You know, combination of Thor and horse. Here we have Marvel Select, also in the running for best Thor ever made. Thunderstrike here is technically his own character. That said, this costume is definitely a huge influence on Thor's Ravager look in the new movie. And speaking of the new movie, here we have Jane Foster as the Mighty Thor. Here is the 5 inch scale basic version of Jane from the new movie. And here we have the Marvel Legend. For an MCU villain comparison, and here we have Hela from Thor Ragnarok. Surprised to see just how much she towers over Gore. But for a truly towering figure, here he is with Surtur. For some other MCU comparisons, and here we have Iron Man. Here he is with Spider-Man from Homecoming. And hey, here's that Black Widow figure I always forget I have. If you think about it, it's a nice little cast reunion for the prestige. Here we have a couple of different versions of Doctor Strange. Obviously one is from No Way Home, the other one is from Multiverse of Madness. And speaking of Multiverse of Madness, here he is with the Scarlet Witch. On that subject, here he is with White Vision, pretty much separated at birth, and then shifting over to the comics, and here he is again with White Vision. And then crossing the Rainbow Bridge back over to Thor, and here we have the Destroyer by Marvel Select, and here he is with Loki. This is from the same series as the Toy Biz Thor. For another Marvel Big Bad, here he is with Thanos. I actually don't have any movie versions. For a demigoddess from the Distinguished Competition, here he is with Wonder Woman. She is the daughter of Zeus, after all. And on that subject, and flick, flick, flick! Just because it feels appropriate, here he is with Voldemort. I see you got to keep your nose. And I see that you were reduced to playing Alfred in Lego Batman and was replaced by Eddie Izzard. Do you really want to have a conversation about being replaced in Batman? You're talking about me, aren't you? This segues perfectly to the only other Christian Bale action figure I have, Batman by NECA. Come to think of it, I guess I do have this one as well. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spider and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Between a lack of accessories and other figures to display him with, Gore the God Butcher does not have a lot to offer. You could always give him a lightsaber and sneak him onto your Star Wars shelf as a random Sith Lord, until we can actually see the movie and get some idea of whether or not Gore is gonna stick around or just be another forgettable one-and-done Marvel villain. It's really hard to say. All that being said, he does at least have one accessory and other Thor figures to play with. For playability, I'm giving Gore one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I found my Gore on Amazon, but he retails everywhere for $24.99. It's important to remember that this is a 100% new sculpt, and so the budget had to go to the figure instead of accessories. But when you consider just how much more we're paying now versus a year ago, and only to be getting less, it's a much harder pill to swallow. For price, I'm giving Gore the God Butcher half a point for a grand total of 4 out of 5. For more Thor, check out this Jane Foster versus, or check out this video video on the 5 inch basic Jane and hear my thoughts on the upcoming windowless boxes. How excited are you for Thor Love and Thunder? Sound off below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.